Geekish Cast is a member of the Astro Panda Productions Network. Welcome back to Geekish Cast. I'm your host, Jeremy, and joining me today is Michelle Gray Hartso. Uh, she's got a movie coming out, a children's book out, a tarot deck out, a cookbook. Michelle, is there anything you haven't done? Uh, I don't know yet. <laughs> I'm going to try to cover all the bases. I, don't, I have some more years left. <laughs> okay. Well, let's, um, let's start real quick here, and we'll, we'll hit each of your projects you've got coming up as they go. But um, how did you get into a creative, well, I guess... Uh, how did you start getting into creative stuff? I mean, you're doing comic books, children's books, movies. What was your first creative outlet that you really took to? Uh, okay. So, well, um, uh, a couple years ago, uh, I, <laughs> I dropped out of college mm-hmm. and I, didn't know what I really wanted to do, but I, I've always loved writing. And so I've always had lots of notebooks, lots of stories written down and, I kind of stumbled into the indie film world in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. Um, in like, you know, I think it was, I think 2006 I started in there and I, it was right as kind of Hollywood started doing a lot of movies there. And so a lot of people were really excited in that sense that like indie film had a chance there and there was like really talented people there. So I ended up. Um, doing a couple movies. I had a movie on Netflix for a while called, um, um, the, Aff- the afflicted. Okay. And so that was fun. And I did, you know, a couple little indie things and I wrote and directed my movie, um, a feature film. It's, it's called unraveled. And I, kind of shelved it for a couple of years because I did it and I was really into it. And then I think as any indie filmmaker knows, there are people that get into it. It's like, wow, it wasn't what I wanted it to be. It wasn't the baby that I, that I, you know, had these expectations for, but as you know, you know, a young 20 something girl, you know, obviously that wasn't going to happen. And on a tiny shoestring budget that I put together myself, um, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't as easy as I thought. And so, so it it was disheartening at first, but I think that, um, I ended up coming back to it because my husband is, you know, a big film person. He's always loved, you know, film and filmmakers and indie and and everything like that. And he kind of said, Hey, you know, I think that it, you know, you need to have this out in the world. You need to put it out in the world and let people see kind of the work that you've done. And, so that's why I'm going to be putting the movie out this year because I just, you know, it's something that I did a couple years ago. And the cast is amazing. Like the people that I got in there, they really did an amazing job for, you know, it is an indie film. Uh, but it is, you know, there was a lot of heart. And the people that are in it, um, Mark Ashworth, um, one of the actors, is in uh, The Magnificent Seven. Okay. He was the preacher, you know, at the beginning of the movie, the guys like go into the town and there's like a preacher in the middle of right. So he's like that guy. And so like, it was really big, you know, for him and he's, you know, a local Atlanta actor. So it's great to see. And he has a couple other big movies that he's doing like that are well, like, I can't remember them, but he, and then I have my, um, another main actor, Rob Prago, he had, he was in Fast and Furious 7. So like he's, you know, they've, they're all having like these great things happen and I feel so happy for them. And it's like everyone that put their heart and soul into this project, it's like you feel like you have to complete it for everyone, you know, oh, just yeah. cause I'm, just cause I'm the boss and I can hold on to it forever and keep it in my cave away from everyone. It's like, I shouldn't do that. I have to like let the, let it out there for everyone. Let everyone's baby out there. <laughs> Well, let's, let's, let me talk to you about that. So did you start, uh, in acting? Is that what you started with? Yeah. So I started, yeah, I kind of just kind of, I fell into it. I really did. I, I met people that were in it and they, you know, had projects, little indie things going on. Like, Hey, you want to be in this little thing? And then I was like, Oh, I like that. And then I ended up producing, I did, (laughs) I did a movie called Chainsaw Cheerleaders and I was, uh, it was, only like the third project that I'd done, but I actually ended up producing on it and hiring actresses and finding locations and, you know, really working with the director on it. And I was lead in it. So it was very exciting for me. And 
I just kind of, I caught the bug of just being creative and being able to like have that outlet, you know? So I, you know, I loved it for so long. And then, but the thing is, is I've, oh, I'm very shy. Like that was my hardest thing. I, I like, was going to, that really comes through talking to you. <laughs> I am. I am. I'm just this really awkward, shy girl. So like people were like, you know, I was, I, I, I was always good with like uh, being on camera, but I was always like a different person. I always had to tell people like, I'm like a different person when I do that. And I'm just not good at the socialization stuff of like, you know, the schmoozing, you know, I mean, you know, actresses, you know how it is, you know, in Hollywood and stuff like you had to do all that. And I'm like, Oh my God, I'm such an awkward geek. Like I'm just, I'd rather be at home. Like, like I'm not the kind of girl to go to parties and meet everyone and get the role. You know what I mean? There's oh, just, yeah. I don't know, there's like a, there's like a social aspect of it and I'm not good at that kind of stuff. So <laughs> like, am I, you know, as an independent uh, creator though, have you, have you still found that you have, I mean, there's, there's some part of this where you have to get out and shake hands yeah, and, and I, yeah. And I like it. I like it on the one-on-one sometimes, you know, but I, I think that I always, I always hated telling people I was an actress for one. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that, that was a thing. Cause I've always been like, no, but I'm a writer. And like, I've always been like, cause I, you know, it's just like, you're a more serious person, you know, I mean, I've always been like, you know, I have stories to tell and I've always, you know, I've, that's always been more something like even when I did my movie, like when I when I got into doing movies, I always wanted to be part of like writing the scripts and, you know, helping rewrite scripts. So I did a lot of that in Atlanta, like with a lot of little independent productions. That's how I made my money for a long time was like just helping people rewrite scripts and, you know, kind of, you know add some action or or do a budget breakdown on production for like a you know indie thing or things like that you know you, there was a lot of little work like that in in atlanta so i stayed busy you know doing that, that. sounds and, like it yeah you no know, just i just wanted to you know be part of telling stories i think and when i met my husband um everett he and i kind of t- like i don't know we hit it off right away because we started talking about stories and writing and stuff like that. And that's exactly like where we like hit. And he was like, I love these like, um, uh, screenplays that you have. I sent him some of my samples and he was like, have you ever thought about writing comic books? And I was like, Ooh, I don't know. I was like, I mean, could I do something like, cause I like them, but I'm like, I don't know. I don't know why, but I think that sometimes that feels like, like it's like it's like a so it's a different genre. So it was like oh my god, like that's like other people, like talented people that do comic books and no comic books and you know, I don't know. I just it was there was a little bit of a wall there at first. I was afraid. I think <laughs> of like jumping in and trying to you know compete with other people that you know really know comics and really you know um, I guess went to school for it and you know that kind of stuff. Oh, sure. Uh, do you so, mind, do you mind if we say who your husband is real quick, just so yeah, people ever heart. So ever heart. So he's the creator of razor. Yeah. He kind of created the whole genre of bad girl comics in the nineties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, kind of, kind of people. Yeah. <laughs> Call him the legend. He's kind of done, did some stuff in the nineties. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and I'm not saying he's not doing anything now. I'm just saying that he birthed an entire sub genre of comic books himself, essentially. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And his story, I mean, if anybody knows his story, it's a, there's a, you know, anybody can know why I fell in love with him. He's, he's a kind of guy that really made himself something out of absolutely yeah. nothing well, and, and believing in his story. So, you know? but him looking through your screenplays and you guys do have similar genres, obviously there's a, yeah. a, a kind of thorough thread of horror between both yeah. your works in yeah. certain spots. <laughs> Dark. Yeah. Or darkness at the very least. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that, I mean, that must've been some form of validation for you to have somebody oh. like him point yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was definitely, I mean, that's, that was actually how we first, like, I was going to help him with writing some, some stuff and we were just talking like that, you know, that's how it starts. <laughs> that's how it starts sometimes. Oh, absolutely. But that's, you know, but I think that that, that for me, I, I, I knew that, that you know, actually this was a conversation my, I was just having with him uh, the other day. What, what is so amazing about comic books, why I've really fallen in love with, um, graphic novels and he's always like oh my god you read like so many of these because i have like stacks of them everywhere and i've (sighs) what i've told him is the the amazing thing about comic books is that you can have an idea in your head and have this story and you can write it and have you know draw it or have it drawn have it created and you can have it 
so fast. You can, you can have it in people's hands so fast compared to like when I'm writing a script or I'm writing something, you know, um, for hopefully making into a movie, it's like, oh my God, maybe in a year, maybe this script, maybe somebody will invest in it or maybe somebody will, it'll sell. And maybe if you sell it, maybe they'll make it. It's like you have so little control over any of your stories ever being physicalized into somebody actually being able to enjoy them, you know? So I don't know. I've, I think that it's amazing, you know, the comic book genre of and graphic novels just being able to tell stories to people so quickly and getting it out there and, you know, I don't know, being able to share. So, you know, it is so much it, easier. <laughs> it is pretty, if you're, well, I mean, I've known people. That it's not have, easy. But. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't want to say easy, but I know people that have created a script, uh, thumbnailed it, mm-hmm. penciled it, inked it. And by the end of the weekend had a 25 page story ready to go. Oh my God. And you they're know? able to share it with people and yeah. people can enjoy it. And, you know, and I just find that fascinating that, that it's well, that quick. <laughs> and let's, let's talk a little bit. I mean, because you come from a film background, mm-hmm. but you, you know, your your earlier films were at the mid-2000s there? Uh, yeah, 2000 to t- 2010, 20. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. just at the very start of being able to share video online. Yes, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. there's there are distribution methods available now, whether we're talking comics or like what oh, I do with God, the podcast yeah. or your movies that exactly. just weren't a thing. I mean, you can make a comic book now, put it all up on the inter- internet for people to read, and then sell it on a per purchase basis. When just fifteen years ago, you still would have had to have spent fifteen thousand dollars to get it yeah. offset, printed, <laughs> shipped, and yeah. Ridiculous. Exactly. Yeah. No. <laughs> so, yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, print, print on demand, and the the ability to to print your stories and um. And have them look quality and be able to, you know, it, it is so much easier. I try to tell this to people. I, I, if uh, um, anybody I know, I'm like, if you have stories, if you have have a dream inside of you to do something, do it. Like right now is a perfect opportunity. The world is, you know, like really ripe for that right now because it is a, you know, free and open internet as we know as we have right now, and you can build an audience and you can sell your stuff and. You know, and you can, you know, deliver these stories without without being tied to a distributor or being tied to like a thousand issues being printed or, you know, you know, oh, my God, I hope I can sell all of this. You know, it's like, okay, well, I sold this much. I can print that much. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of the amazing thing is that now it's just free and open. You can just have access to putting it out in all these ways (laughs) that only now they just now exist. (laughs) <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yeah. I hear horror stories about Diamond. I mean, I hate it, but I do because I do know that, you know, when you're dealing with a distributor that can decide that you have to, like, they are the gatekeepers as far as if you want to get into, like, the stores. And so, like, 20 years ago, you you had to. You had to, like, be brought in, you know? <laughs> like, you know, and it's, yeah. I think, honestly, it's the same thing for Hollywood. It's the same thing for Hollywood that's happening with these, like, amazing indie films that are, that are being made with such, such little budgets. And they'll be like, look what we're able to do. And what you guys thought we would never be able to do, they're now able to do. So it's like, you know, th- these indie worlds, like, you know, somebody was telling me a while ago, they're like, oh, don't call yourself indie. And I'm like, I wear indie proudly. Like, I will till the day I die call myself an indie girl because I make indie tarot decks and, you know, I sell just a small, like, all my stuff that I make is, you know, because I don't care if, like, a million people see it, if a hundred people see it and it's, like, cool hundred people that get to keep seeing all my stuff and I'm, like, really happy with that, you know. Indie is, you know, freedom to me. Oh, sure. Um, yeah, and it's kind of, it's really cool that you, you have come into a market, uh, both film and comics where you can do that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, the night, the nice thing, uh, Amazon does make things easier too. I mean, it's like, I tell people all the time, I'm like, you can have stuff on Amazon and be selling as like anybody else. And it's like the, the, the distribution angles that they have there are, you know, they have, you know, they make it easy. It's easy if you just have, you need little small amounts of things. You know, oh, yeah. you don't, you don't have to jump in with, you know, both feet if you're, if you're too, you know, <laughs> if you don't want to, you know. So I just, 
I don't know. I'm, I'm always encouraging people. I'm like, get get out there, try something because I'm I'm doing a lot of things. People are always like, they think I'm doing too much. My, you know, a lot of my friends are like, oh my god, can you just like pick something? Like, what are you doing this month? Like this month, I have to like, I just have to check your feed to see like what it is. <laughs> always something different that like you're like on and it's like oh okay yeah now she's doing this <laughs> now she's cooking oh okay now she's making a tarot deck sure okay <laughs> hey, but but at least you're not bored right i'm never bored that's the thing is you know what though you, see and that's the thing is maybe because i've never had a social life and like my mom and my dad say this to me all the time but they're like michelle you are our you are our like nerdiest little girl we you could like i never ever like on like when I was a teenager, I would spend the, like weekends like at home reading. Like my mom, ne- like she'd be like, "I know where you were on Saturday nights in your bed, uh, like in your in my bunk bed, just reading like a book, just reading." It was well, like every every weekend. <laughs> so so when when young Michelle stayed home that weekend reading a book, what was your genre or who were your authors? Oh, what what did you God. read? Like Dante's Inferno. Oh my God, I would read these like terrible. Like I was always into like you know um, like greek you know tragedy i always was like i was a crazy you know teenager i was into like dark and like crazy stories i always wanted to read like you know i liked shakespeare too i liked um but then i also loved you know i liked contemporary stuff too but i think that i always like was drawn to these like um I guess origin stories that I would always go back to because you know you'd always read these like great you know all the greek myths and all these you know um Greek, you know, like our old Arabic, you know, stories and, you know, these great, you know, poetry and stuff. I don't know. I've always just, I love like how they use words and I love these great epics like, you know, Odyssey. You know? Oh, sure. So, because what I was trying to figure out is like, it, I'm trying to see, because you have a horror thing. Now, are you into superhero stuff because of your interest in mythology or what? what? Yeah, I mean, see, I love, okay, so I just saw, uh, you know, Split. Yes. And I'm going to tell you, I love that movie and I don't care what anybody has to say. <laughs> See, my thing is, is that I, I really do. I love M. Night Shyamalan. I love his movies and I'm going to love him. I don't care if he's made some mistakes. He's made some mistakes. We all make mistakes. But, you know, maybe he just didn't communicate it well. But he always puts so many details in his movies that you can go back to and look at all these tiny little details that he thought about and like intricately wove into things. But how he puts, um, superheroes suit when he did unbreakable i thought that was freaking amazing at the time that was made that was the best superhero movie that had been on wide release i really i just love the concept of you know it's not just you know it's not just like flashy colors and oh i'm amazing now and blah 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 you know it's real it's gritty it's like you know what is what will make us super? You know, what are those things that, you know, it's not just like, um, oh, I got some radioactive thing. Now I'm just like perfect now. Or I have this like thing that happened like that's just like, you know, he always like makes it like this intricate, you know, story or something, you know, like in science or in some sort of way, you know, deeper, you know? Yeah. I, I am following you on that. I, like I said, I thought Unbreakable was the best superhero movie that had been released by the time of it came out. And um, not to spoil it for anybody, not a big M. Night Shyamalan <laughs> fan, but when I heard about how Split ended, it uh, yeah, it, it gave me a, it. gave me gave me a shiver. <laughs> I was like, oh, get the fuck out, you I know. know? Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, it made it made me want to. Like honestly, I was. I'm one of those people, I'm probably a horrible person, but I always look up the spoilers of movies and I always read like what, like I always read what's going on in the production, like behind the scenes of production, like what's going on, what's the drama and like <laughs> what the rewrites are and all that kind of stuff. But, um, and I did see the spoiler and then when I, and I was like, you know, at first I was like, oh, okay. You know, it's like, you know, killer guy. I'm like, why, why is that not writing some like, you know, this like, you know, whole, I'm like, what's he going to do with this horror thing? And then when I saw that it was, um, a secret sequel, oh, that, spoiler, uh, a, spoiler uh, alert, has, but yeah, a spoiler alert, but it has a comic book. It has a huge comic book twist to it. Yeah. And so, like, literally, when I was reading the spoiler, my husband, he, he was, Everett was in the in the bathroom on the other side of the apartment. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's a comic book. 
how am I going to, he came out, he's like, what is going on out here? And I'm like, okay, we're going to, we have to go see Split. We have to go see Split. <laughs> so, I mean, that's the thing is that I love it when there's a comic book twist to something or um, Slight is coming out. Um, and that's like a gangster movie. Mm-hmm. But and it's like a magician gangster movie, but then it's like a superhero movie. So it's going to be like a, but it's like set in the tone of a gangster movie, but then okay. it's going to have like a superhero twist to it. And there's like a lot of these movies coming out where it's like, um, like it's not necessarily a comic book movie, but it's going to have like kind of a superhero maybe person that has like maybe some superpower, <laughs> some super abilities, you know? Sure. And I think that's intri- intriguing because I think that we're all going to start having those like as like transhumanism starts happening, as we start having all these things happen in society, as things go progress forward, you know, there's so many things that could happen that are, you know, interesting to explore. Oh, absolutely. I, I just had a, um, a semi-regular guest back on and he's a voice actor and I was going to ask him about some of the voice roles he had done recently. We spent 40 minutes talking about uh, parallel reality and whether or not life is real or just a simulation oh man Uh, that is a hard one to decide too because in all likelihood probability does say uh, the likelihood of us being in this time period when all this is happening is pretty unlikely so i um i don't know i don't know i mean it's it's hard it's hard because there's a lot of you know, my, 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 uh, stepson, he's 11 and he's, he's pretty sure that we're, we're all in a simulation and, you know, he, he has so many crazy ideas on, cause we watch a lot of that stuff and oh, he's sure. like, no, yeah. we're in another dimension. And he, he talks about this kind of stuff. Like it's normal. <laughs> like he'll be like, no, that's the, you know, that's just because, uh, he went through some sort of time portal and we're now, you know, <laughs> he's like, he, all his, he writes, actually he writes comics too. He's 11 and he's written about like 10 comics now. So he's getting ready to like put them together. I'm like, that's oh, awesome. Wow. He's that really insane. is awesome. Yeah, he, he's insane. He, he, I have to like, I have to hold myself up to his standard because he will knock out these books. He'll sit down and he's like, well, I came up with an idea, and he'll be like, just leave me alone for a minute. He'll go into his room and he'll just sit there and he'll just draw out the panels, you know. Mm-hmm. And the way he puts them together, you know, he just he'll just see it in his head. You can just see it, and he'll just you know just draw it out. Knock it out, and he always finishes a story. He's never not finished a story. I'm like, oh man, if I could have that, if I could have that discipline. That's incredible. <laughs> I've been sitting on a two page uh, treatment for a graphic novel for about 10 years. And oh, that's, exactly. that's as far as it gets. Right? Yeah. Exactly. You just have like 22 page things, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's incredible. Let me ask you about this. So, um, I mean, you know, again, you do. A, a little bit or a lot of everything, but, um, the tarot deck, let's, let's, let's start with that yes. and start. Yeah. yeah I'm laughing again. <laughs> but, um, okay. So you, your tarot deck, it's, uh, the Temptress Tarot, uh, the Provocateur, I believe is the name yeah, of it. Temptress okay. Tarot Provo- uh, Provocateur. Um, you can, uh, my Etsy is Michelle Hartso and you can see it, uh, I read tarot.com, um, or look up Temptress Tarot. Uh, you should see it. It's Michelle Hartson. So okay. it's a, uh, it's a, uh, uh, this, this, so this is my second deck. My first deck was kind of like all faces and it was like very colorful. And basically I wanted to embody the entire deck in like a character, like as a writer, I was like, okay, I'll just embody each, you know, one of the 78, you know, de- uh, cards as a character. So I did that. And then now, um, so, so then I, This, I had this idea when I was, when I was doing it, I was like, well, I just had this vision of a very like sleek deck because my other deck is like very loud, very colorful, a lot of like colors going through it and stuff. And so this deck, I wanted to like create something, you know, sexy Mm -hmm. and, you know, beautiful and kind of like celebrating, you know, the human form and body and and I wanted it to be all nude, but I wanted it to be, you know, done in, you know, a classy, beautiful way, you know, kind of celebrating. Because um, the whole tarot itself is about the journey of life. The 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 78 cards each represent, you know, um, the major arcana is, is 22 and you kind of go through your your journey of life. And then each house represents, you know, a different um, part. And so 
each one I wanted to give its own feel to. So each house has its own color and like, uh, uh, I guess there's blue, uh, orange and then uh, with yellow and then I have my red and I have my green. So each element is represented in the houses and then kind of through the forms is the major arcana of like different body forms and different, I guess my husband said he feels like when he's looking at it, that it kind of represents like the aura or the spirit of like people. Okay. Um, I'm following you there. Where did the idea come from? Well, let's, let's do this real quick. So, what inspired you on uh, to do tarot decks in general in the first place? Um, well, I've always liked tarot decks. I've always been kind of into them. My aunt reads like the stars and tarot and everything like that. So she introduced it to me kind of very young and I've always, I've just always loved the stories behind it. And, uh, I've always actually loved watching people get tarot readings, like how deep they go with like, okay, here's three cards. And then they'll like talk for a half hour about this person's life. So I'm like, wow. So that's what kind of got me into learning about each one of the cards. And then about what a year and a half ago, I just, I just got this, uh, kind of, I, I just, I decided that I was going to make my own deck of some sort and I decided to make a tarot deck. I was like, I really want to, to create this thing that I've had. I had it sitting around for a long time, this idea. And when I realized that I could publish it, like, um, at, like on a small scale, mm -hmm. then I was like, Oh, I was like, this is actually something I can do. Cause I've always thought like, Oh, I'd have to like get it licensed or, you know, sell some sort of, you know, normally that's how, like, if you're going to make a deck, like you have to come up with a, you know, design and then you, you submit the design to, you know, one of these major playing card places. And then, you know, if they pick it, then you, you know, you can get a licensing deal or whatever. And I was like, Oh, that sounds like a bunch of crap. I don't want to deal with. It. So <laughs> it's not like, that's not my way of doing things. So when I realized that I could, print like a you know uh, a small number of decks and i limit all my decks like my first and my second deck are limited to 100 decks and so they're going to be special to like anybody that owns them and that anyone that has them and you know it'll be one of the things that i've created like that's the thing is that i know i'm creating a lot of things and that like that would be like okay well i have that tarot deck that she did when she was you know making tarot decks because she was really you know into that and that's the thing is that i I'm always creating things like I like I said, like I'm always at home and, and I'm always like drawing and writing and creating something. I'm I, I'm always having stories, you know, kind of come to me. And oh, sure. I um, love having that. <laughs> well, I'm going to say I love I'm going to yeah, stay with your tarot wait. decks for a minute here. But um, yeah, so you get the idea for the for the decks. Um, when you do the artwork, how large um, how large is your original artwork for each card? Um, uh, the major arcana was nine by 12 and, um, the minors are nine by six. Okay. So, um, they're just, you know, uh, they're bigger than the cards themselves, but the cards themselves are actually three and a half by five and a half. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're large cards. Like they're like, I guess you call them like jumbo cards or whatever, but I like the feet. Um, a lot of people that like collect like these um, limited tarot decks, a lot of them have told me that they like the kind of larger cards because it, you know, they get to look at the art and if it's more of it's something that like they collect, you know, it's more about like having it, you know, to see. Sure. <laughs> well, yeah, and I'm sure that some people probably display them even. Yeah. Yeah. Or you know parts of them. Um, now, are you the artwork you're doing? What what is the medium? Is it Copic markers, watercolor? What do you use? Um, watercolor. I did um, uh, the first two decks. I did them in um, pencils and watercolors. Okay. And inks. So yeah, it's I love watercolors so much, but you know, for me, I like I just started doing art in 2014, so I'm not like I feel like so so behind because my husband is so talented, like. I swear to God, like, uh, I started doing watercolors and, and I still remember I was like, I was watercoloring one day and then like my Everett came in and he was like, Oh, let me, you know, let me, let me like borrow that. I'm going to go and, you know, try this out. And he literally walked out of the room like an hour later with this like 
like stunning piece. And I'm like, how did, how did, how did you just, how, how, how? And he's just, he's so talented. So you can't compare yourself, I think, as an artist. But when you're married to another artist, it's like, because oh. when people say that like, they like my art, I'm like, okay, well, it's, it's not as good as other people's. But I think that it's just, it's just how we all feel. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually, I, I can imagine it's, it's both a blessing and a curse to live with yeah. somebody who, who can produce art that quickly, that well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Well, so then based off of that, you've also started, you've got a comic book and a children's book. I believe your children's book and, and comic are both done or what were your status on those? Um, uh, uh, my children's book is called Wicked Children, mm-hmm. and the first book is done. It's available in my store. And um, but the um, I'm actually going to be coming out with it again in the spring. It'll be um, redone as a comic book, so that'll be uh, for the children. <laughs> mm-hmm. That'll be under my um. I do uh, uh, Sugar Pill Publishing is my kind of my children's line. It's where I have my cookbook. It's where I have you know I have an ABC book, um, and then Wicked Children things like that. And it's all for you know like kind of like the you know younger, 14, 12 yeah. and under kind of <laughs> you know younger crowd. And then you know we have our older our older crowd stuff. <laughs> um. Well, and I got to ask this too. Um, your cookbook. Yes. What, what kind of stuff is in there? We don't really need to dig in too far, but what kind of recipes? No. What kind of stuff do you? <laughs> um. Okay. So yeah, it's called the Comfortable Vegan. It's a vegan cookbook, and it's basically just an introduction. Like, um, I went vegan a couple years ago, and then when I did, I had a lot of, you know, I had people start asking me, you know, for some of my recipes that I had, and so information on you know like well what do i need to get and stuff so in it it has like kind of an a condensed like nutrients you need to look for and then like websites that are good to like get on to like help you and just kind of like a general like you know how to stock your pantry if you're like getting started you know a lot of people are curious and they want to like try it for whatever reasons you know for themselves and so i just kind of put it out there i'm not like it's not like my um it's not like a career I'm getting into. I'm not a, like I keep talking about. I'm not like a, a a chef or a cookbook creator or anything like that. I'm I'm just a person that people wanted some. You know, it's it's more like um a, a family recipe book sure. with you know with you know that I'm sharing with people that I know and people that are you know people that know me that want to have you know kind of a fun. It's a very fun, easy book too. Like everything's drawn, like all the, all of it's illustrated and like more, no more than like five steps to like every recipe. So it's like very, you know, simplistic and just, uh, it was my first thing. It was actually my very first Kickstarter, uh, Kickstarter. And so that's what kind of got me, you know, that's where I jumped in on the Kickstarters and then kind of started off from there. So yeah, it's it's been a while. That was two years ago. I can't believe that. That was yeah. That was like January of twenty fourteen. Yeah, that's wild. <laughs> twenty fifteen. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then so now your comic book. Oh, let's see here. Uh, <laughs> let's just segue. <laughs> well, here's the thing, Michelle. Normally, I'm I'm talking to somebody about one or two things they've got going, and you've got so much. I that, know. I'm yeah. the best. I know. <laughs> no, it's not even that. It's just like, I, how do I even, how do I even choose a side to come at you from on this? Like, well, we got to get your movie in. We got to get your children's book and your cookbook and your tarot Lord. deck and your comic book. Um, yeah. So your comic book. Now, are you when when you do the comic book? Are you, what what parts are you doing? Are you writing it? Are you writing and illustrating? How are you approaching it? So, um, with Vampire Journals Asylum. Um, this one is I'm writing it, and um, uh, Jeremy Ray is my artist. He's in uh, Oregon, I believe. And we're doing um, with Vampire Journals Asylum. This is going to be my first, you know, oh, I'm so nervous too. Like, oh my god! But this is my first uh, comic book that is like going to be all me out there, and um, and I'm very excited about it. It's it's very you know kind of uh, noir. And somebody was just telling me, you know. Um, they were talking about, you know, kind of that old comic book, like, you know, horror with, you know, you know, a little bit, you know, it has a little bit of sex appeal to it. Yeah, there's, a, you know, there's a little bit of nudity in, in it, but nothing, you know, nothing crazy or anything like that. It's, it's, you know, it's not for children, but it is, you know, it's kind of this, it's, 
it's kind of like an old school feel. It's set in the 1940s. It's set in an asylum. And it's about vampires kind of inundating a small town run by an asylum. So is the doctor crazy? Is the, is is are the people crazy? It's 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 a it's a kind of a wild dark. Tale. Oh sure, okay. Yeah, that actually sounds like a great premise. And <laughs> I say a serious vampire story should have nudity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's just kind of how I feel about it. And you know, and and you know, obviously my husband uh, feels the same way. So. Yeah. I was gonna say go go watch any Hammer horror uh, vampire movie. There's gonna be some boobs in there somewhere. So you know, there should be some nudity in a good vampire movie. Or story exactly. in general, yeah. Exactly, because yeah. you have to keep, you know, you like, you know, even when I'm, you know, I'm writing the books, I'm like, I'm very, you know, I'm just so excited to tell these stories and get this kind of like, you know, dark, dark noir tale kind of out there. And the the other stories that you know, um, that will be under the company are going to be other kind of, you know, you know, darker stuff. The, I have an artist right now working on. Um, a story that I'm writing with my husband called Devil Bitch, and it's a little bit hot, more dark, but it's 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 actually like set in like the 1500s. So it's gonna be like a like kind of Game of Thrones wild story. So gotcha. that'll be with my that'll be with Everett, and that'll be kind of us working together. So in the course of the next year, like Everett and I are gonna be working together on some things, and then like some projects will be my own that I'm writing and then some I'll draw. So I'll be cool. doing a lot of things. Now, now I'm <laughs> assuming with a title like Devil Bitch, this will be a children's story. This will be a children's story, <laughs> yes. You know, that'll be under the Sugar Pill Publishing. No, awesome. No. <laughs> awesome. And and I take it your your vampires are more traditional monstrous, scary vampires with a uh mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. No no um, glittering in the sunlight while playing baseball shit. Oh my god, no. Okay. Please no. But so they can take human form though. They do they can they can look human, but um but they do not always look so beautiful. Yes, they're that kind of uh vampire. And the nice thing is, see, it's set in the nineteen forties in uh, you know, kind of West Virginia coal miner uh hills type area where if anybody knows of this kind of area it's basically the sun's blocked out 99 percent of the time like there's you know clouds of dust and just because all the and shit in the air that's in yeah. the air all the time yeah. so because of that it's a perfect place for some vampires to hang out so they don't really have a problem walking around in the day or getting around and you know being obviously in the hospital and stuff like that because that's There's outstanding. No, that's, that sounds no, like a great sunlight. premise. Well, make sure I know when that comes out because I definitely want to read that. Awesome. Yeah, it'll be actually the Kickstarter for Vampire Journals will be um, will be up this month in, in February. So okay, perfect. Once I get once I get all the pages done and it's it, I I am going to be uh, launching my projects when the Kickstarters are when the like when the pages are complete. I want to make sure that like I can have quick turnarounds for people and be like, okay, I'm gonna you know. Get it printed and get it in your pocket, you know, quickly, <laughs> so that you guys know you're getting a, you're gonna get the product. <laughs> no, that's awesome, and that's I don't know how often people run into that, but I have been seeing Kickstarters that are having that issue from time to time. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then let's go ahead and we'll talk a little bit about your movie before we wrap up here. But your movie Unraveled, which you said has been done for a while, and I know you're you've just got together some distribution for it. But why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, a little bit about the story so you can kind of titillate the listeners and get them interested. Okay. Um, so Unraveled. Unraveled is a story about two kind of young, two women that are living their life and kind of falling apart. And the The main character is... A young girl living a kind of normal life with a lot of back memories kind of haunting her, mm-hmm. kind of um, messing with her enjoyment of daily life as her reality around her kind of starts to crumble. The past starts to mess with her more, and as those two kind of things collide, then... 
her reality kind of becomes jumbled until we don't really know who to trust or really um who 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 we, who we can follow in the story it's 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 kind of a it's it's a psychological thriller where you're kind of trying to figure out who something's who, unreliable in the narrative yeah, you're trying to figure out exactly where the story's going. Who who's the unreliable, you know, narrator? Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a dark. It's another dark dark story. <laughs> well, after talking to you, I have to tell you, I'm a little shocked to hear you've got something so dark in the works. But okay. <laughs> yeah, I know everyone's all like, I really am not a dark person, but I just no, love. Well, you don't I've you don't come across like that at all. But yeah. <laughs> I know my, I, my, I was when I was well, when I was a teenager I was a goth chick and I used to like I dyed my hair black and I had like the black fingernails and I swear to God everyone was like that they're like you're the bubbliest goth chick in the world because <laughs> awesome. I've always just had this like, but I just be like totally like yeah world <laughs> <laughs> that's cool well Michelle we're starting to run down on time here so let's um where can people find out about your projects on the interwebs. Um, uh, just go to, you can go to michellehartso.com or go to Etsy Michelle Hartso, uh, store envy at Michelle Hartso, or you guys can go on Facebook. You guys can add me if you uh, want to. You can add me. Um, I don't have many. <laughs> I'm, I'm on, uh, Michelle Hartso. I think, I think it's just, uh, Michelle, uh, facebook.com slash Michelle Hartso. Yeah. Okay. And are <laughs> you, are you on Twitter at all? Uh yeah, I am. I don't understand Twitter, and I tweet. <laughs> you guys can, if you guys want to teach me how to tweet, tweet, tweet at me. I don't that's understand it. <laughs> awesome. I know I'm a geek. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It'll work out. You'll figure it out in time. I'm a little hermit, is it? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So first off, Michelle, thank you for joining us. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> a lot of fun talking to you. Yes, thank you. Yeah, and in the meantime, everybody can catch us at geekishcast.com, uh, at Facebook or at facebook.com slash geekishcast. I tweet from at the geekishcast. Uh, we are part of the Astro Panda Network, and we are on Blog Talk Radio, iTunes, Spreaker, SoundCloud, and uh, Google Play nowadays. So find us there, and until next time, y'all have a good week. Geekish Cast is a Vias and Victor production and is part of the Astro Panda Productions Network. You can find us now on SoundCloud and on Blog Talk Radio. Our theme music is taken from the song Out to Get Mine by Reign of Zeus. Check them out at reignofzeus.net.